Hi everyone, thank you for watching A Year Full of Drama at the New York Baltic Film Festival. I'm here with director Martha Polk and we will dive behind the scenes to kind of give you a little more uh, in-depth understanding of, uh, of the film. So hi Martha, welcome, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Um, so let's start from the very beginning. How did you um, settle on this idea? And I believe you developed it together with a theater group. Uh, so can you yeah. talk about how you guys know each other? Uh, there is a theater group called Kinabet in mm -hmm. Estonia. And first of all, just to give you guys a little bit of a background, mm -hmm. uh, Estonia is a country that's very weird about theater. I think it's a lot of Soviet heritage, but uh, we have 1.3 million people. Mm -hmm. And per that population, we have 1 million theater visits every year. So there's an outrageous amount of theater being made and watched. And uh, there's this theater company called Kinodat who does a lot of socially critical theater, a lot of experimental theater, and they conjured up this uh, idea uh, to take someone who has never ever been to the theater before and make them watch and review every single play. Uh, and so that idea actually came from them because as they were thinking like, okay, we do a project like this, but how can we bring it to the world? Clearly a film was the only way they could do that. So they ended up coming to me, inviting me on the project, and uh, and that's how I got started. But as you see, I think I kind of hijacked the, I think I kind of hijacked the story because I'm not really one to make art about art to right. to other artists. To me, the story of Alicia and um, yeah, her development became so much more important than just giving the overview of Estonian theater. Mm -hmm. So the idea changed quite a lot while we were doing. As, as, as you were already yeah. yeah. And do you have a theatre background yourself? I don't really. I used to I used to go to theatre classes as a kid or in high school. But, uh, and my sister is an actress, so uh -huh. I, I'm a little connected, but uh, I'm not a huge, uh, right. huge theatre buff. Right. And so did you have any, you or the keynote head of the group, did you have any uh, preconceived notions like what you thought would happen? Or did you kind of just go in? Um, <clears throat> or hoping that would happen? Honestly, since it truly was an experiment, mm -hmm. then we would have ha would have accepted absolutely any outcome. We were prepared that whoever we picked, that they might just in six months say, but oh, fuck it, shit. I'm not doing <laughs> it much. anymore, yeah. Yeah, and quit. And even that would have been a very acceptable outcome, because that's what you want to see. You want to see what actually happens. Like, that was the whole notion of the idea that Instead of saying, yes, theater is valuable, theater, all theater is art, all culture is, is extremely important and very like, necessary to someone, that you take that, um, like this litmus paper or this, mm -hmm. uh, like this real person who it's intended for, and you let them decide. Mm -hmm. So any, um, any outcome would have been intriguing for us. Because you can imagine as a filmmaker, if she would have run away from me in six months, then it would still be a story. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, and do you think that her being filmed affected her decisions? Because she did come close to, you know, she had a lot of thoughts and ups and downs. Her being filmed? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Interesting question. <laughs> um, I think Alicia was from the, for, like, from the get-go very open to the camera, very open to being filmed. As a documentarian, it's a strange thing when in the end, you can never know whether the presence of your camera affects someone. But also, in the end, the final product you see is also a dramatized mm -hmm. situation already. So it's a bit difficult to answer that question, but... Um, I guess we'd have to ask Alicia. <laughs> we'd have to ask Alicia, yeah, but... Um, the, way that they, the way that we tried to find this person was that it was an open job ad. Mm -hmm. And it went through the Estonian National Unemployment Agency, etc. So it wasn't like a casting, it was... Uh, it was, you know, you're, you're looking for an employee, mm -hmm. just they have a very peculiar job. And um, we had them send in uh, these video greetings that you also saw in the beginning of the film. And when we started watching them to pick the people we would invite for, the, for an interview, um, they were listed alphabetically. And Alicia was, I think, like fourth. Mm -hmm. And as soon as we saw her, just the way that she interacted with the camera, she was filming herself, but like, she was very open, very, like, her ability to, re to reflect herself was beautiful and she was kind of willing to be vulnerable no matter if someone was looking. And that to me was so captivating that, um, 
I think that's something very characteristic to her and something that makes her very special as a person and as a character in the film as well. Yeah, so the job is, I mean, it's kind of independent from the movie, but it's also not. So how did you choose one to go with her? Because I'm assuming you didn't see every single play that no. you saw as well. Right, so how did you choose what you uh, uh, filmed? I think I had more, mainly like two, um, how do you call them? Well, two kind of lines of thoughts. Mm -hmm. That first I tried to kind of follow as different types of theater as possible. But then a few months in, you already start understanding a bit of Alice's taste. Um, and you start understanding what might speak to her, in which way. And that's how we started making the choices. And, and oh, to get kind of stronger reactions? Maybe? Yeah, to understand what might speak to her and what, yes. yeah, exactly. What, what, uh, what's relevant to her, because that's what's relevant to me as a comic. And in the end, uh, like, Theater in this film isn't theater on its own. Like we see theater, or at least the way I tried to do it was that we see theater in a way that it relates to her life. Right. So even the topics that you choose, even the scenes that you choose from from a certain play, because when you go and shoot a play, you still shoot like an hour and a half of it, and in the end you get to pick one thirty second or one and a half minute segment. So it was always like what relates to her, what what can we use of the theater that drives her story forward. And what were the things, how did you define what would speak to her or get a reaction? Like, um, what she would like? She developed quite a specific taste, actually. She was very, uh, a lot more drawn to experimental theater mm -hmm. than, than classical theater. That was clear from very early on. She was very excited about uh, plays that interacted with the audience and included the audience. Uh, but I think also I always tried to guess thematically. Like I would, I was reading all of the um, all of the introductions to all of the plays and kind of planning a few months ahead, and just kind of seeing okay, where could I, in through which play could we speak about certain things that are relevant to her? That's interesting. That's an interesting way of filming. Yeah. That's probably pretty unique. And I can. I don't know. Um, I think as whatever documentary you're doing in the end. Like if it's a portrait documentary and this is a portrait, then I think that's the most organic way of approaching it. That you just try to see, you try to predict life through the eyes of your character in a sense, and that you take them as the alpha and omega of any decision that uh, that ends up on the screen. And I mean now, like looking at the film, and you know, we're in the middle of the pandemic and everything's been closed. Mm -hmm. It feels kind of funny the timing. It's very, you know, it's like a celebration of watching things together, and we, then we lost that for a while. Um, yeah. And how did you feel about the timing of when it, when it came out? As a filmmaker, I think for me it's often that once you finish a project, it's done. Mm -hmm. And this one was finished before the pandemic started, because then new problems and new projects started as well. But um, as I say, I'm not a big fan of theater. Um, but one thing that I feel I got from this shooting process and, and from this film myself is that experience of I think theater in the truest form is such a collective art. You watch it collectively, close to other people, like elbow to elbow with other people. And also like the people on the stage are like, there's so much synergy that has to happen in the very moment for, for a play to work every night. Like, um, Film is one step away from that because what's happening on the screen is there forever. You just have the audience reacting to it. But, but I think in the past two years, this is exactly what uh, most of us have been missing: this yeah. sense of community or sense of unity of just breathing together with other strangers and, <laughs> and going through something yeah. similar that comes to you from the stage or from the, the screen. And it, so it has traveled a little bit, but I am assuming that you you haven't been able to travel yeah. with it as much. Yeah, the film has traveled quite a lot yeah. to. Iceland to New Zealand to Sydney Film Festival, etc., but uh, even to Argentina, and I've been in Estonia. <laughs> I did have the privilege of going to Love and Anarchy, the mm -hmm. Helsinki okay, yeah. festival, but uh, yeah. But um, and I, I, it seemed like it was very well received in Sydney. 
and by kind of the English speaking world because it was uh, in a Guardian list of best theater films or something, yeah. you know? So I'm just wondering if you have any thoughts about why the English speaking audiences reacted so strongly. Honestly, I would even say that it's, uh, I don't think it's specifically English speaking audience. I think it's uh, cultural and theater oriented audiences mm -hmm. because uh, I don't think there's a lot of films that uh, speak about art in such a manner that we don't center around one artist or one creator or one thought of uh, or school of thought on, on a specific culture. Um, I think this experiment in its essence was something quite um, extraordinary and that's why it speaks to, to audiences who, for whom this topic or this, this field is important. Cool. Um, and then I'm wondering about your um, your future work and if anything that you kind of learned from this project will um, well first of all tell us about your next work and then, and then um, if anything that you experienced while making this film. Um, since *Year Full of Drama* was my first feature length film, mm -hmm. and I think everything in that process affected <laughs> affected how I continue my work because yeah. it's all a learning a learning process. Uh, but my next film that uh, just premiered in uh, IFA, mm -hmm. the documentary festival in the Opus Bono competition, is called Tell Me. And that's spurred from a very different um, point. Uh, the point of the film is that uh, in the first wave of lockdowns, so in March 2020, uh, we started collecting uh, anonymous voicemails from people's home imprisonments. And we did that from 15 countries around the world. So from China to Kosovo to Estonia to France, Germany, England, to Argentina, the States, Canada, etc. Uh, at this time when everybody was kind of experiencing this collective yeah. trauma. Yeah. Exactly. And, uh, and people were imprisoned in their homes and some of them were very happy about it. But some of them were funding with violent partners and mm -hmm. some of them hadn't spoken to another adult for two weeks. Mm -hmm. It felt like there are so many emotions that we've never experienced and maybe very little places to put them. Mm -hmm. So we opened up these anonymous phone lines mm -hmm. and uh, collected just voices, vo like voice after voice after voice. Mm -hmm. And that became a poetic documentary called Tell Me. Okay. And that's finished now. Amazing. Congratulations. And I look forward to seeing that as well. Uh, thank you for joining us today and giving us a little insight behind uh, your film. Uh, I want to remind our audiences, we are all of our lineup is still available until November 14th, so please watch some other films as well, and the Q&A with those directors as well. Thank you, Martha, for, for being here. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Good luck.